So welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark Spencer, and this is Steve. This is not Steve Martin. We actually have a very special guest with us today. This is Alex Gollner. Welcome, Alex. Hello. So some of you know Alex, um, if not by name or face, definitely online if you do anything with Final Cut, because Alex also is known as Alex4D. Um, and has created a, a huge number of free plugins over the past several years since Final Cut Pro has come out. And uh, virtually anybody who has any contact with Final Cut has probably come across your plugins in one place or another. So Alex is actually lives in the UK, but he was here for the Final Cut Pro 10 Summit uh, that was down in San Jose just this past week. And although you may be seeing this some weeks from there, uh, and we took advantage of that and, and dragged him up to Petaluma to, to shoot one of these episodes. We want to get a chance for you guys to meet him. And, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about motion today, right? Yes, it's a tip to do with motion because, um, well, it's about creating backgrounds behind your titles. So I'm going to create a background behind a title and I'm going to do it two ways. So okay, let's take a look. So here I'm in motion. When you start off motion, obviously you can choose to create a title. And this is designed going to be for Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm going to click open and make it fill the screen. I like to use option click because I like to- I do too. Yeah. Option, option click the little green button there so it doesn't uh, get rid of your menu. Exactly. I know it's going to be the sign of an old school person soon. People say, what? Yes. Do you have that menu up there all the time? What are you talking about? <laughs> so I'm going to change this to fit using the view menu. And see, we, here we have some type. And I'd like, when I create my title in Final Cut Pro, to have a rectangle background behind it. So I'm going to choose the rectangle tool draw the rectangle and I'm going to go to the inspector and change its color so I'm going to give it a, a dark blue that's cool and maybe reduce the opacity a little bit and of course down here in the timeline I'm going to change the order I like to use this uh, area down here and I'm going to change the order and use it like this so here I am in motion and if I made this available in the final cut I could uh, type whatever text I wanted to in here I've got to select the text and uh, double click this and go, this is my text. If you could imagine this in uh, Final Cut, we won't go into Final Cut. But what I'd like to do is also make it so that the length of this blue box here on the screen matches the length of my text. So it, it will. you want to make it automatically adjust to match the string, the text string? Well, that's hard to do. I mean, I, I, a way I would have done it um, before, this is the tip, is actually how to make it match. Uh -huh. um, but So at the moment, in the case of the rectangle, a possible thing to do is to get the rectangle and change its, to publish a property for its um, Z dimension. No, X dimension, of course. I've been thinking about Z. And that, of course, is not that position. So go to scale. And I essentially want to do this kind of thing to change the length of the box. But unfortunately, this I can't link this actual value of scale. I can't link it to the size of the text automatically using scale. So you could publish the scale. So then Final Cut, you could manually adjust it, but it wouldn't automatically change to reflect changes to whatever text you put in there. No. So this tip is about making that happen, to okay. make it so it is possible to have a background that appears behind the text and it automatically gets bigger and smaller depending on the size of the text Fabulous. and whatever you want to do. So what I'm going to do is uh, delete the rectangle because we don't need that. Oh, <laughs> you just take the whole thing away. Yes, <laughs> no, you, exactly. So, okay. I, so we're starting from scratch. So how do you create some text that the, the background of the uh, also follows the text? So what I'm going to do, select the text itself. I'm going to go to the object menu and choose Make Clone Layer. So what this does when you use stuff and do stuff in motion is that sometimes you want to uh, work on a copy of what you're doing. Say, for example, mm -hmm. on this clone layer, I want to make it so that as I type text down here, uh, text to the bottom of the screen, it also appears at the top for uh -huh. some strange reason, although I don't want to do that. So that's uh, undo move. I want that clone there. But what I want to do is apply a filter to it. So I'm going to go to the filter menu here and choose border and simple border. Hmm, this is interesting. So what I'm going to do is go to the inspector and increase that border size to 100. So you made the width, you made the border so wide that it completely filled the, uh, the space inside. Yes, so that means now when I go down here, or I can do it in the layer menu here, as I move the clone layer underneath the type, it's visible. So now when I edit my text, Mm 
the box is the same size because as the text. That your box is no longer a shape it's a filter that knows how big the text string is basically because yes. it's created and normally it outlines the text but you've, you made it so thick that it actually acts as a box for the text yes so that means great. i can select this text and make it bigger and smaller and by definition so i go to the inspector and change the size of the text no problem it gets bigger and smaller so here we go so this is the the trick but then the next question is this box is quite is quite tight to the text so if i deselect it and look at the group it's quite tight. I, I'd like yes. to increase the size of the text. But then I can create another clone. So I get to the text here, go to the object menu and choose make clone layer and move that underneath. And then I can apply the same um, I can apply the same filter again. So I go to border, simple border. And then let's say I've got this as a clone behind, we can't see it. So what I'm gonna do is make this border a different color just so we can see it. Okay. So we can't see it at the moment because it's right behind yeah, the, the previous one. Exact same size as the other one. Uh -huh. But we've got border placement. I can then choose this time to make the border placement overlap uh. or outside. So what I'm gonna do is leave it as, I don't know, let's keep it as overlap and make this something like 20 or maybe a bit more, let's say 25. Maybe I'll make it um, 25 and have it as outside. And now, of course, I could make this black, but just to show that it's still moving with it, I can say type text here, double click. So I've got two clones, one with the border applied on the inside and one on the outside. And the reason you use two instead of just that second one is the first one you needed to be able to fill all of the inside with it. Yeah, so now if, uh -huh. I, if I do this to actually make the first clone um, invisible, that's the, that's the second clone, so that's the border, the first clone invisible, it would do that, which right. you could do. You could actually have a, a rectangle awesome. going around if you wanted but to. But by combining them, you get what you really wanted when you started out, which was a, a background behind your text that has more width than the text itself and more height. Cool. So the next thing to do, if you wanted to make this a plugin in Final Cut Pro, was to make those two colors the same if you wanted them to be the same. And you do that by using a link behavior if you wanted to. So say, for example, I want to have um, this filter, and I want this color, and I publish this color, this black mm -hmm. color, and I make it available to be changed in Final Cut Pro. I go to the context menu and choose Publish. So that means that's a color I can change in Final Cut Pro. In order to go to this copy of the filter, it's using the wrong color. But if I use the add parameter behavior, I can choose add parameter, add link behavior. The link parameter behavior. Yes. Yeah, very, very powerful. So this is the kind of thing, if you're doing plugins in Final Cut Pro, this is the rather scary but incredibly useful uh, behavior that you're going to be using a lot of the time, I think. And the question is, where, which color do I, I want to use? Where did this come from? Well, I want the color from the previous clone layer. I should rename these things. I always advise people to rename things as they do them, and I didn't do it in this That's case. Fine. So I'm going to drag this clone layer on here, and I have to tell where the color is going to come from. Where is the color on this clone layer? Well, the color that I want is on this filter, simple border, color, and I choose it all. And there, it just picked it up right away. Cool. So I can now simulate using this. This is a bit like what the inspector would look like for this title here. In Final Cut. In Final right. Cut. And then I can choose a different color. And they both change at the same, the same time. Sun. Fabulous. So there you go. That's very, my tip. Very, very good tip. You took it. I, I've seen a version of this. Um, and you've used a version of this with a single one. But by adding the second one, you took it to a whole other level. Because that was the issue, is not being able to get more uh, width around that background. Cool. Nice. Thank, Thank you very much. Tip. Yeah. And thanks for coming on the show. Great to have you. We'd love you have back when you come back to the States. Or maybe we'll come out to the UK and we'll do a we'll do a UK version of MacBreak Studio. Absolutely. Looking forward That'd to it. Fun. Cool. Okay. So thanks you guys. Where can people find out about you, about your website? I suppose Alex 4D. So Alex4D.com. Alex4D.com. And uh, on Twitter, where I mainly hang out and where I mainly update, so at Alex 4D. At Alex 4D. So definitely follow Alex. He's got a lot of great stuff. Check out his free plugins. Um, I'm Mark. We have training, rippletraining.com. You already know that. So we'll see you next week at uh, MacBreak Studio.